So, so just run it down, your equipment, why are you using it, what it is? Okay, um, I'm endorsing Pearl Drums. And, um... Are those pearls in the video? They're pearls in the video. Um, huh. At the time, honestly, I wasn't signed to contract, but Omar was ringing my phone. I was going through problems with the drum company I'd rather not mention. Okay. That um, I used to play, that I used on the record, that really um, weren't... Weren't, weren't interested in me at all, but basically, um, I met this guy named Eric Hall in L.A. And Eric was the original cat that um, talked to me about Pearl Jones. I, I met him, and I, he said, hey, look, I heard you guys are in town. Can I come down? I put him on a guest list. Came backstage, and he said, you know, you really should be playing Pearl Jones. And I said, well, I never played Pearl Kit before. And I said, I know I've got, I've got a few friends that are playing, and Tommy Campbell's playing them, Cam with the Nards playing them, you know, yep. Omar Akeem's playing them. But um, I never, you know, I, I've sat in with those guys, but I'd never played a pearl set. And he said, well, I'm going to give you some stuff. Take it home and check it out. I said, okay. Got to New York. He told me to call up the company on the East Coast in Jersey. You know, I spoke mm -hmm. to Rachel Gallus. And Ray was the rep, and Ray came down to see us at the Ritz. We opened up for Nona Hendrix. Ray lost his mind. He was like, well, this, i never seen anything like this, you know. So he says, look, you know, are you interested in, in, in the drums? And I said, well, look, this is my sound. These are the drums that I really love. This company doesn't want to do diddly, but I, this is my sound. If you can get me this or better. That's, that's sort of the basis of how that started. Um, I went out to Jersey and played around five or six different kits in the factory. Uh, one of the maple kits really sounded great. I took it, I didn't take it back, but I said I want, you know, I'd like to try this kit. They were very nice to me. Um, they said, we would like for you to try out a kit. I was still in the middle of touring in the, in the States with Living Color, doing the MTV College Tour and stuff. And I said, you know, we had a video coming up called The Personality. And I didn't want to use the drums that I was using because of the stuff that I went through. So he says, look, how about if you use a pearl kit? And I said, well, what if I don't like the drums? And I don't, you know, I go on to, to a different company. Um, you know, your drums are in the video. I don't, want, I don't know if I want to have that kind of legal commitment. So he says, we're going to get you what you need, promise, da 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 And they were very cool. They said, take this kit out on the road, try it out. And, you know, there, were, there was not no really no force to sign. I felt like they believed in me as an individual as, as well as the band. Yep. And I told them, fine. I took the kit. I didn't know what I was getting. Those drums just showed up. You didn't know you didn't, you didn't you didn't order your own sizes or anything? No. I, well, I told them. They said, what do you need for the video? And I said, you know, just give me a five-piece kit. Um, 22 inch, you know, kick, 13, 14, 16, you know, because it's just a video. And we're going to be playing live, but I'll tune them up and, you know, I'll bring my own cymbals down, no problem. I was really interested in their rack system, mm -hmm. which is what I'm using now. And um, I got a Sequoia Red set, if you'll see, like the Landlord video. Mm -hmm. um, I have Sequoia Red set, and um, that's what I took out with, with me on the road. Honestly, the drums sound amazing, but they weren't heavy enough to me. I tried different heads and stuff, and I wanted something that was going to, you know, sound very godlike. And uh, <laughs> this, yeah. this, this Z kit came out, and um, I've been using it since this tour started, and I'm totally pleased with it. So now I'm using the custom Z series uh, Pro kit. I'm, you know, I have 10, 12, 13, 16, 18, 22. Uh, inch kick, which is 18 inches long. Um, I'm using their 8 inch custom Z snare drum, which sounds amazing. And I tell you, I never thought I'd put my brass snare down. I lived in, you know, I ruled with that snare drum. Yeah. That, was my, that was my snare. Couldn't take it away from me in a stick up, you know. And um, this snare sounds amazing. And it's that brass drum is now my backup drum. That's how good this drum sounds. What, what's what's different about uh, the, is it the Z, Z series, they call it? Yeah, they call it a custom Z series, Bird's Eye Maple. Okay. Um, it's a beautiful, it's a gorgeous looking set. That has anything to do with it, but I have to say, I mean, it looks like furniture. I like to take a Tom and put it in my living room and put a wine glass on it. <laughs> when you retire, you can always make lamps out of them. Yeah, you know? right. right. Yeah. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll put some wine bottles on top of the kitchen. <laughs> you know. But um, it's a gorgeous looking set it's really really beautiful but it's 10 ply it's very thick and it's it's very heavy sounding and what turned me on to the kit was i went to a pearl clinic with um dennis chambers tommy campbell greg bissonette 
and they, they all came out and traded traded fours, you know what I mean, and, and played funk beats. And Dennis, by far, was the most phenomenal player, but Greg's sound just crushed everyone's sound. Huh. To, me, to me, I mean, personally, I just felt like his, his kick and snare was just stomped everyone's sound. And I said, that's what I need. I need that kind of weight. So um, I spoke to Ken Austin, actually, who's in town now. We're going to have lunch after this interview. And um, Ken, um, I told Ken that I really dig the kit, and I like to take it out in the Stone Store. And what better way to sell a new kit than to take it out on tour and play in front of 60,000 people a night, you know? Mm -hmm. And I love the drums. They sound really, really amazing. But this, the red kit was great. You know what I mean? It was really, really good. It was a good kit. It sounded good. And it was, I got my personality out of it. But I had to fight. This kit is just, yeah, this is, I feel this is me. And I'm happy to be with this company. And I'm happy to be playing these drums because um, this sound is the sound, my sort of future sound that I'm leaning towards mm -hmm. getting, getting to. No, and now, now uh, any electronic uh, stuff at all in your yeah, kit? Yeah, I have a uh, drum cat, which is an amazing sampling unit. I used to use the Octopad, and I use the drum cat now because you can get up to three sounds on one pad, mm -hmm. and there's ten pads instead of eight. And you, you, you control the whole switching and program changing and stuff with foot switches, which I stick next to my hi-hat. And you can change your programs by hitting the pad in between songs. So. You don't have to get up or jump around and do, you know what I mean? You yeah. can just go click, 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 and you're there, and change. I'm using the drum cat, and that's running through an S1000, a Kai S1000 sampler. Mm -hmm. And that's as far deep into the electronics as, as I've gone. I, I like my acoustic live sound. Um, I have people leaning on me now about using samples since we're playing big stadiums, but I'm sorry, I'm just not into it. Yeah, what are, what are you using samples of? Uh, live? Yeah. Oh, uh, on the uh, drum cat? Yeah. Um, the Malcolm speeches in the beginning are called Personality. Yep. I have some horn hits, some orchestra hits. I have some samples we used from Jagger when he was working with us in the studio producing Glamour Boys and um, Which Way to America. He has. I have the sample of him saying, okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. But it's very English sounding. Oh, AK. It's like, okay, here you go. Yeah. Okay, you know, it sounds really, really, <laughs> Yeah. It sounds pretty funny. So I take things like that, cartoon things. Um, uh, I have a couple of things in my M1 I'm going to transfer because I have some ideas I want to use for the next tour we do on our own, our own headlining tour. And I want to incorporate some of my keyboard playing and some of my sounds and stuff into my sort of open drum solos and make the open drum solo a big sort of orchestral African song. <laughs> yeah, okay. So using using uh, using di digital samples. Using digital samples, using triggers, using sequences. Okay. And using my live set. I'm still putting it all together, but um, I think if I can get it to where I'm at least thinking about it now, it could be pretty amazing. So that's that's my dream right now to focus on that. When this tour's over, and we'll start. We've already started writing. We already have a lot of material for the next album, and I really, really want to spend a lot of time practicing and incorporating that. Mm -hmm. And um, that's basically all that I'm using for now. I don't have any drum sounds coming out of that out of that unit, and I do have a Roland R8. And if I needed to take anything out, I would possibly pull some things out of there that I want to use. I want to maybe get like a reverse kick drum and stuff to just use mm -hmm. to add to my original sounds, but. To me, and this is just my own personal opinion, you know, that if you have a great engineer, you have good drums and a good drum sound, good microphones, you can get a good drum sound. may not be what you got on the album, may not be what you consider to be a perfect drum sound. To each his own. Um, you know, management was leaning on me about getting it. I'm, I'm not into it. I'm just not into it. And I spent too much time on technique and stuff. What were they uh, into, leaning on into? Well, they just were talking about it with, with me, and I, I felt like that was a jive approach. Really, what happened was, uh, on our tour before this, we were touring the States, and we played in Florida or somewhere, somewhere, I think it was in Florida, mm -hmm. and uh, David Lee Roth's sound man showed up at Soundcheck, and he walked behind my kit, and he said, you tune your drums, and I said, yes, I tune my drums. He goes, that sound that I just heard out in the house is your kit, and I said, yeah, it takes a little while, sometimes but basically this is it 
and he shook his head and I was like what's the matter with you and he said we, we trigger everything you know we trigger toms and stuff so it's consistent every night so we don't have to spend time on this and I said I hear that you know yeah <laughs> that's how you do your tour that's you know that's great you know but um you know the management was like I after that happened the management were like well you know well you should think about that and I'm like no nah, I'm, I'm not into it you know yeah it's too Jesus they want everybody, everybody to sound the same you know yeah Man, into it. Get a get a kick ass sound, man, and work. Mm. It's paid to work. Everybody work. It doesn't really take that much longer to me. Yeah, it really doesn't. It's. Uh, I think that's a very Java, Java approach. To me, I'm not saying the David Lee Roth approach is a Java approach to getting drum sounds. Don't. I don't want you to like misquote me on that. Yeah. But for me, in Living Color, it's a Java approach. It's only four of us on stage. There's no need for that. Mm-hmm. You know, I want the drums to sound the way they sound when I tune them. That's what I want people to hear. If it, you know, if it needs a little EQ or beefing up, or whatever behind a board, do it. Fine. Yeah. But um, I'm not gonna sample toms and kick drums and and just use those. Now, switching, mixing, and matching is something interesting that I, that I might get into. Maybe what is that? For, well, maybe for a heavier song or a lighter <laughs> song, you may want to get a rinky dink <laughs> toy snare drum sound okay you may want to stick in for like four eight bars of a funk song and then kick in your regular kits things like that yeah i think are slick that's great or throwing in different size kick drum thing you know but to substitute my whole kit is like you know i might as well be up there playing pads yeah you know i mean that's it's the same thing i might as well just be up there beating on rubber pads and um you know i'm not into it 